This says, Brian, my name is Karen, longtime listener. I recently, you may want to get your pen out for this because I've proofread this. There's a lot of information here. Okay. I recently inherited my dad's farm, 225 acres valued at $7,000 per acre, which I did the math. It's $1.575 million. Okay. Farm equipment, easily 800000 worth of tractors, conditioners, balers, and trucks. Hmm. Inherited his IRA worth 750000 and a savings account with about 120000 I'm 63 years old and seriously thinking about cashing it all out, selling, and retiring. Other than my own guilt, is there anything wrong with this idea? Hmm. That is a l- that's a lot to digest, buddy. Yeah, that is. I mean, what I don't know, uh, she didn't really talk about her savings. No, she didn't. This oh. is just what she inherited. I know. I'm assuming she's 63 year old. 63, she saves some of her own money. I would think. You would yeah. hope. Um, but, uh, I mean. Again, would we, she have to? That's a, that's a lot of money worth of well, stuff, I mean, if she's it? spending a million dollars a year, then she can't retire. Right? Well, but who does that? <laughs> Well, there's people that spend a million dollars a year. Is that right? Good but great. I'm just saying we don't know enough information. Um, you know, what's wrong with the idea? It doesn't sound like it's her dream. It was her dad's dream to farm. Right. right? So, Which may explain the guilt. Yeah, and I Feels get, and I get that. You yeah. know, you, it's it's going to be very emotional. Uh, farms are very emotional. I um, <clears throat> I don't know. We moved quite a bit. From Phoenix to then moved out to Massachusetts, New Hampshire for a little bit, tried New England. Um, and that, I think we had two kids at the time. Yep. And then moved back to Arizona. Uh, and it was just a lot of moving, you know, you're, and you grow the family and you need a bigger house because, you know, with uh, six kids, it's like, okay, wait, that house was too small. And then, the, you know, the needs change. And I'm hesitant to say this, but you, you kind of were a farmer, weren't you? Well, that's what I was getting to. Yeah, so um, so moved, sold some property in, in Arizona and did a 1031 exchange. And wanted, I saw, I kind of, not saw it, it was happening. It was, it was literally happening right in front of me, which is actually a lot of precursors are happening right now, a lot of indicators. The listings were popping through the roof. They went up over 200% in Phoenix. Well, the Phoenix metro area, right? The number of listings went up or mm-hmm. the, the number, amount per list? The, the okay. number gotcha. of listings. Okay. And, and actually, that's happening right now. If you go to redfin.com, uh, you can click on a demographic. If you go to uh, you know Phoenix, California, Salt Lake City, Vegas, it's 150 to 250% increases right now. On really? People li- are selling properties? Uh, on the listings. Well, the, the, the listings that are coming on the market, right? And over here, we're still having an inventory problem. We got 500 in our little, our little market, and we're supposed to, on average, have 2,500. Some that's starting to shift a little bit. Yeah, but still very low. Yeah, right. So, anyways, the point is that started, you know about real estate too. What the heck? Started to see that, and uh, I was like, okay, well, I got to sell these properties. Had four different pro- properties. Sold three of them right away. Needed to live in one. Sold three. Moved out here a uh, year and a year and a half later. And, um, the, you know, the farm is, um, uh, when you work the land, it's very emotional. So I'm sure Karen helped her dad at one point, maybe when she was young or maybe when later years, it's very, you know, it's blood, sweat and tears. Into yep. That I was just thinking that th- it very is, phrase. I, I mean, I have sold a lot of properties over the years, but I tell you, we cried like a baby when we sold that thing and it, and yes my son was born on the farm we actually you know he was delivered with a midwife which you know that there is a sense of emotion there like one of your children was actually born Sounds like little house on the prairie it sort of was um but um you know it was is emotional because that's you, the tears part of the blood sweat and tears well yeah because yeah, you're just you put everything into it like not just the money but your but your just your effort so Not many equity. people's effort. It wasn't just me, right? I were our kids. We had uh, interns and employees, even family that would just show up and like, hey, I'm coming down. I'm driving through uh, Virginia. want to stop by and see you for a few days. You know what they were doing? They were working all day. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they, yeah. There was no vacation on yeah. the farm. They're like, hey, we just wanted to hang out with you. I'm like, well, 
this is what I'm going to be doing for the next 16 hours. You know, I'm going to go move the cows and, and then I'm going to go move the other herd. I'm going to check on the calves and then we're going to check on the chickens and the pigs and the turkeys. And then we got to deal with some customers, make a delivery, and they just follow you around, but they're, they don't stand there. So it'll be fun. We'll ride the four wheeler down to check on the cows. Yeah, we didn't have four wheelers. We used uh, mules. Oh yeah, yeah, you know, the side the by cow, side. Cow, yeah, the side by sides, yeah. which was way more fun. Oh so, <laughs> yeah, those are beasts. I know. Everybody's like, "Can I drive the mule?" I'm like, <laughs> you can't just drive the mule. You have to do work, and then you get to drive the mule. <laughs> right. Yeah. But it was it was uh, it's really funny because farming is one of these uh, very. I don't know. It's it's addictive, you know. It's like you. I I've never seen a tax return to this day, and and before I moved to Virginia, I helped farmers. I represented Farm Bureau Financial, so our clients were farmers. Yeah, and we would ask for their tax return, and I'm like, okay. And the bigger they are, the bigger the loss. It's not that oh well they're bigger or maybe they're making more money. No, it's just a bigger negative number. But their worth is all in assets, right? right? Because yeah. so they get they don't make any income. But the land appreciates, right, typically, and, and especially out in Phoenix. So we had farmers that were worth tens of millions of dollars because all the developers wanted the land. Right? Oh, right. Yeah, I mean, even an hour and a half out of Phoenix, and there was a guy that, uh, oh, my goodness, he had sections of land. One section is 640 acres. Anyways, it was worth like $64 million. And you, it took you two hours to, to get there from the outskirts of Phoenix. It wasn't like it was right in town, right? But, you know, developers were still, you know, planning and, and uh, hoping to build. So, I mean, there's a lot of things you can do. You can keep the farm. You can rent it out, Karen. Find a farmer that wants to rent it to keep it in, to keep the hope alive. Maybe one of your kids or grandkids one day would want to farm. I'm, I'm hoping the farming thing will turn around. We've got farmers as clients. None of them are making money on the farm. Because the price of food is kept down, I'm blaming it on the government because it is their fault. Not everything's their fault, but most things. Yeah. Um, but they keep the price of food down so well with the subsidies that you can't make money in farming. It's impossible. I mean, you just I, there is if you do, it's uh, your family member works full time for a, a real job in town, right? The, the spouse or or you got a pension or you're an ex military. You got some other income. Well, you gotta love it to do it, don't you? You do. It's absolutely love. Oh, yeah. I mean, I couldn't talk a farmer out of quitting farming for anything, right? Um, but sell the equipment, keep some, you know, get some cash flow in, in retirement, invest in real estate, stocks, whatever you want to do, build a balanced plan for you. Um, should have a step up in basis and all that stuff. So even if you did sell the property right now, assuming it wasn't in an irrevocable trust, which I hope they didn't do that based on these dollars, um, you're going to have a pretty nice sustainable income stream. I mean, you know, that's a, that's a good amount of money, especially cause there's not a lot of tax that she, cause she inherited it. Right. So, so um, we're just, we're looking at just over three, right? Yeah. 1.5, 800, 750. And 120. So, but of course, her dad probably lived in a house that was, uh, you know, I mean, it was the farm. Modest. Was, yeah. Oh, yeah. 50, 60 years old had been remodeled and, you know, 1,200 square feet. Driving the 73 Ford pickup. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, and station uh, wagon. Right. Because it's just, they live low. You know, they, they were trying to get the farm working. It was always the goal. And some years they, they have made money to say that they've always not made money. It's just really been the last 20, 30 years that, Farmers haven't made money. So you recommend she so sell it, d d do it, come talk to somebody. Yeah, What's sell. I mean, obviously there's a lot, there's a lot there. His IRA can't, you know, cash that out. She needs to take RMDs on that over 10 years. Oh, right, required right. minimum distributions. I didn't think about um, that. You know, unfortunately it's too past the date. You can't do a, a qualified charitable distribution. But um, so make, don't cash out the IRA. You could take it slowly over 10 years, but yeah, I mean, you could sell a lot of the equipment um, and uh, keep the farm if you want, rent it out to get a little income. You don't get a lot when you rent out land, but it'd be at least to uh, keep it in, keep pay the expenses, right? There's no taxes. There's no inheritance tax. Is that what you said? Right. Well, because yeah, they're well under the lifetime exemption for uh, the state tax. Yeah. So you'd have to be, it had been over 12 million, but Assuming so, there's a cost, a step up in cost basis, right? So let's say 
her dad's farm. He bought it for, I mean, which is crazy. We had some farmers in Arizona that bought their farms for like fifty dollars an acre. Their dads it's bought crazy. it in like the forties, yep, and thirties. Well, held on to it. But back then, there everything was so cheap out in Phoenix. As air conditioning wasn't didn't really exist yet. If it did, it was expensive. So the place hadn't boomed. And then they're selling it for 70, 90, 150,000, 250,000 an acre. And it's not like two That's acres. Right. You got 300. It's quite acres. the cost basis. Yeah. Right. So yeah. it's like they got this cost basis of nothing and they owe, you know, uh, you know, I had a client sell for 6.4 million. His, his cost basis um, was something stupid, like 100,000 or something. Wow. Yeah. Cause it was just, it was crazy, which is a good problem to have, right? Which, wouldn't cry on his shoulder or anything, but looked at the, you know, what is it? 1.8 million in tax or whatever he was going to have to pay. Gosh. Crazy. So, uh, Karen, first of all, thanks for listening. Second of all, let me give you a number to call. 866-2-PLAN-4, 866-TO-PLAN on the number four. Sorry for your loss. And uh, it sounds like you got a lot to bite off there. You can also check us out online at retirementplannow.com. That's retirementplannow.com.